What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Planet X Cadmos, their version of an IDW Star Saber. So this figure is actually a couple years old, but this is the 2022 reissue. I think originally this came out in 2019. So this is a reissue about three years later. Now I never picked this one up because I wasn't so sure if I'm interested in IDW. I do have some other Star Sabers, we'll bring them in here for comparison, but since the Planet X version of a Victory Leo is coming out, I decided let's take a look at this because I just think it's really cool that they can combine together. So we'll take a look at that when that guy comes. But for now, let's take a look at this guy. He's got some really nice paint and detail on him. All that yellow and white you see here on the chest, the metallic blue here, the red here on the front of the arms and on the side. Light blue down here, some gold paint here, gold on the knees, white paint here on the knee piece here, blue for these fins, a translucent piece with silver paint behind it. On the back, these wings are painted here on the blue, so there's a lot of paint. As far as die cast, there's quite a bit of die cast on this, so the thighs are fully die cast. These knee pieces right here are die cast. There's a bit of die cast here on the arms, these two red pieces. Uh, and there's a little bit of internal pieces that are, are die cast, but for the most part, those are the parts that I pointed out there. Let's take a look at this one accessory that he comes with, which is this beautiful sword painted with gold, gunmetal silver, and then a chrome for the blade. You can see it really shiny and nice. Right? Looks great. You can do a couple things with this. So you can store it on his arm like that. So that's nice. You can also obviously put it in his hand and these fingers are pretty nice actually. They're, they're nice and sturdy. So there's a little slot right here. It'll fit into the hand and there's actually a little groove for the sword to fit in. So it's actually a little bit more secure when you get it in that groove. So that's, that sword isn't going anywhere and it's beautifully done. Looks great. Uh, and you'll see me kind of messing with him a lot, and that's because he's got a lot of, I'll say, awkward joints that we're going to talk about in just a bit. You can also come to the back here, so it's kind of, not really an accessory, but I guess it is. If you come up here and take this tab out, and this is actually off when uh, you get it in the box, so you'll have to put this on yourself. But un hook that tab, and then this is just going to pull off. I have noticed there's a tiny bit of stress marks down there. I don't know if it was there before I started or after, but there's a little bit of that. So come back to the front here, and again, straighten out his legs. And this, there's a little tab right here that will fit into the other side of his arms, so you can get this. I recommend you hold with your finger in here as you put it on, otherwise that panel will collapse as you put it on. But there you go, now he's got his shield or whatever. Actually, you want to turn this around too. There we go. So there's that look. If you prefer, you can have it with that. Me personally, I like it on the backpack. Just a little more symmetrical. But you have that option if you want to. All right, one other accessory you get here is alternate faceplate, but I want to show you this is the stock faceplate you get. It's actually really nice looking, very good head sculpt on this, very star savory. So if you want to swap out the faceplate, you got to lift up here. When you first get it, it might be a little tight, so I'd recommend using a spudger. Just get it under here, and that'll give you a little bit of leverage to get this off. And that's what he looks like without a faceplate. Pretty funny. This one has just got a bigger chin, so it's kind of a longer, wider chin than the original. And there you go with that alternate face. My personal preference is the other one. This one's just a little too big. It's got that Jay Leno chin, so I, I would put the other one back on, but there you go for those options. All right, now let's go over his articulation, and there are actually kind of a couple little fatal flaws with his articulation, but overall it's got a lot going on. The head is on a ball joint, goes up to there, down to there. You do get side to side and it rotates all the way around. 
And for transformation, you can collapse the ears. I'm not gonna collapse it here, but I just wanna let you know you can do that. The wings here can fold in now. I think if you prefer the streamlined look, you can push those all the way back. And now he doesn't show any wings. I don't think the IDW Starship actually had them, but you can fold them all the way out if you prefer to have that displayed. I like them kind of angled back. For the shoulders, you got a lot going on. So you have in-out butterfly joint here. You also have a shifting joint here, which is for transformation, but it allows you to shift the shoulders forward. And you can still use this joint here. So there's a lot going on in those shoulders. You really can get his arms way in. It's very nicely done. The rotation of the shoulder, of course, it's hindered by this backpack, but you can move this out of the way. So if you bend that downwards, you can get that down with the wing or with the arm. So you can sort of move it out of the way if you were gonna pose it and get that wing out. Or you can actually take the wing and slide it back. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, and I prefer that option, but you wanna take this backpack piece off and you can end up putting that on his arm. But if you take this and you shift it back like this, that gives you a little more room to work. And actually you can shift it all the way back if you really want to. And it ends up being kind of like a jetpack, you know? Which I don't mind with the Star Saber having a jetpack. Um, but now you've got free range, right? So. That's a nice little option there if you prefer, you can move those completely out of the way and then use those arm joints. Continuing down, you have a rotation at the bicep. You have a single joint elbow gets you 90 degrees. Rotation at the wrist. Individually articulated fingers at one, two pins. A little bit weird because the farthest you can get is there. And it should have gone straight, but you can sort of point. The thumb is on a ball joint, by the way. And you can sort of get him pointing, but it's just slightly curved, so it looks a little weird. But I'll give it to him, and you can, you can make him point. So there you go for that. You have a side-to-side -side movement here for a teapot. I, I don't really like it because it's loose. So it ends up moving on you when you don't want it. And I tried to tighten the screw that's holding it, but you also have this, the backpack rotates as well. It's part of the transformation. It's supposed to be held by this tab, but sometimes that tab's come loose. So just make sure you put that tab right there in his back into that, and that'll hold this from rotating, right? That keeps that. Um, but this one is a little bit loose. I have tried that screw, it doesn't really do anything. You also have an ab crunch. So you get up to there on the app crunch, which is pretty, pretty cool. I was actually kind of impressed that they had that much on an older figure. You have hip skirts here on the front and back. Allow the leg to go up to there on a ratchet, back to there on a ratchet, out to the side on a ratchet, rotation at the thigh, at a cut joint. Double jointed knee gets you the full bend all the way. Coming down to the foot, you have an ankle tilt all the way out to there, and a pivot pretty much all the way. And for a size comparison, there it is, it says Transform Element Optimus Prime. Now obviously, Optimus Prime never appeared in the Victory cartoon, or I don't even know if he was in the IDW comics, but Planet X is kind of going for their own thing here. I mean, they have the IDW styled figures, and they're all sized with each other, but they're not necessarily sized to scale with other masterpiece figures like this. And so, for another comparison, which I think people are actually interested in, and somebody asked me for this, is there it is next to the Iron Trans version of Star Saber. Now, somebody asked me, I'm gonna do a versus. No, it doesn't make sense to do a versus. This is IDW Star Saber. This is a G1 Victory Saber. So no, it's not, it's not gonna make any sense. But I just wanted to show you for a sense of scale. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his jet mode. Now, since there's no way to show you the core robot in the jet mode, we're going to get it out of here and show that to you first, and then we'll go into the jet mode. So, first thing I'm going to do is lift up here on this panel, and just make sure you watch out for the antenna on his head. 
you can lift this up. It actually tabbed in, so there's two little pegs here that go into these holes. So that's what you're detaching. And now we have the core robot out of there. Saber, I think is his name. I don't know what his name is in IDW, by the way. I'm not really a big fishing out of, of IDW, so I don't know much. But fold these feet in. We're going to take the legs and rotate them to the front. Take the arms, fold those down. Fold your hip skirts down. Open up this panel here. Slide the head up. Close that panel up. And there is your saber figure. He really looks cool. He's got nice gold paint here, here. Silver paint on the face. Metallic blue for the visor. Gold paint up here. Plenty of deco on this guy. He does really look good. For articulation, the head rotates around. No up and down or anything like that. Good looking head sculpt as well. Shoulders will rotate around on this ball joint. It can also go up to here on the ball joint. Uh, the backpack will get in the way, but if you slide it back on this joint, you can get the arm all the way up. The elbow is on a ball joint, but it's double jointed, so it gets you the full bend. And you can also rotate on that ball joint. You have a waist rotation on this guy. Hip skirts will move out of the way. Legs go up to there. The legs are on a ball joint as well, so back to there. Out to the side, not that much, but kind of out to the side forward is sort of how he works. Yep. Uh, continuing down, you have a ball jointed knee, so you get 90 degrees. You have a rotation at that knee. So rotation at the thigh and at the knee. You have an ankle tilt, like I showed you before, and that's it for this guy. So let's get him into his alt mode. And unfortunately, we're going to have to put him back into his combined mode in order to get this guy transformed. So go ahead and fold the arms up. Pull this chest out. So fold the head down. This is going to go up and around. And then these are going to sit like this, I believe. Same on this side. Rotate this. And these are going to sit up and around over here. I know it looks a little funny right now, but that is how it's going to go. Our next, go ahead and fold the wings up like that. So they're straight line up here. Then we'll take the legs. You can just fold this up out of the way so I can show you. Rotate this inwards. We're going to take the entire leg and fold it up on that joint. Rotate this to the inside. There's two tabs here, one on the red and one on the white. So you want to line those two up and get them both in to the leg. So it should look something like that. All right, so we'll do this one now. Rotate that in, rotate this up, rotate the leg to the inside, and then get those two tabs into the leg. Uh, and then you come to the front here, open up this and there you have the jet mode for saber and not bad not great either but not bad sometimes these transformations can be kind of wonky and not the greatest but yeah so overall pretty nice looking jet mode unfortunately we do have to put him back so fold this up we'll unpeg these legs rotate them Back down, same on this side, rotate this, rotate that back down. We're going to take these arms and those are going to fold the wings down and then take the arms and that's going to rotate all the way back around and then tab back into here. Same on this one, rotate this all the way back around, tab back into here. And now we're going to fold them back up like he was. So take this. This is going to come all the way back. 
And this hip skirt actually fits inside of the cavity of this leg. That's how the transformation works. And then this is going to fit right into the arm. And then this is going to come down and sit on the outside like this. Right, same on this one. Bring this up, tab it in. And then open this and set that down. All right, so this is going to go back in the chest just like this. That's the front. So if you have it all configured right, you should be able to get this right back down into here. And then make sure you tab these feet onto the top of its chest. That's what kind of holds it in. And make sure this is pushed all the way in. Bring this back down, and now he is back in the combined mode. And now we're going to take Cadmos and transform it into his alt mode. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the back and chest here. So come back to here, unpeg this tab right here that's retaining the backpack. And we're going to unpeg this as well. We're going to take, you can move the arms out of the way. Take this entire backpack, it's going to rotate around this way. Take the head, we're going to rotate the head 180 degrees, and it's actually going to sit his chin right above here, on top of that little tab. Come to back here, open up these panels. This is going to rotate up. Sometimes it likes to come off that peg, so just be aware of that. This is going to come down. Uh, before we close this up, you want to push his ears in. They just squeeze together ever so slightly. Getting them back out is kind of hard, but you can see they've now compressed a little bit. So get this down. These are going to tab in to the top of his feet. So make sure they meet up and go in. And you're going to take this wheel out. And I forgot to take, I should have taken that out before I put this in. But then close these up. Make sure the head's fitting in there. And then that will collapse together. And so that's kind of the front of your jet. Rotate this. And now we'll work on the back part here. Um, while we're at it, might as well collapse these arms. So these arms will collapse down and stay like that for now. Alright, so let's work on the legs. Rotate this way. We're going to unpeg the back of this foot, or the leg. We're going to rotate this all the way around. So that you end up with the booster sticking out of his knee. Fold up the heel spur and then fold up the foot into that cavity. And then this is going to, oops, this way. This is going to fold up and sit. It's got to be the right, <laughs> the knees have to be perfectly folded for this to fold up correctly. So make sure you have it something like this. Where you have this one, this one should be folded all the way in. Sorry, this piece here. And then this should be sitting just over the edge of his thigh. So something like that. Uh, and then these, if they haven't already gone down, you're going to push them flat. Right? So we'll do it again. Fold this up. Open up this panel back here. Sometimes it gets tight, but you can get in here and then fold it out. There we go. Fold the knee all the way around. Fold up the heel spur. Fold the foot in. And then we're going to take this entire thing, rotate around to this side, making sure you have the knee collapsed the right way. I'm going to end up something like this. Come to the other side here. These two panels are going to tab together. So they're pretty tight tabs. But get these pushed together. Line them up. And then push. And it can be a little tricky. And actually it doesn't feel so great either. But maybe give them a squeeze like that. There we go. Alright, so now that you have that, we can take care of the arms. 
Make sure the waist is not cockeyed. <laughs> and that's one of the things I don't like about it. But fold this in. We're going to lift up on this wings on both sides and just sit them back like that. These arms are going to rotate inwards and sit like this. Now these hands in the instructions, I believe they sit like this. But if you want a little bit better of a look, you can rotate this. So you have the flat part of the hand sticking out. Um, you don't have to do it, but it's just a little extra thing. All right, and then you're going to take this. This is going to come down, and there's several peg points. So there's one tab that's going to go into the top of the arm. There's one tab that's going back here, and then this tab is coming and meeting up here. So you got to get all three of those in. All right, so that one's done. Do the same thing on this side. I'll try to go a little faster on this one. Take that in, bring this down, tab it in, tab it in, and give it a nice squeeze. This is going to pull outwards and then come down and tab into here. Same with this side, pull this outwards. Make sure you pull it all the way, otherwise you won't get that, that joint you need. And then push down and tab it in. And we can come to the bottom here, open up this panel here, and that's where your landing gear are, will be. And finally take this piece here, oops, make sure you get this tab in. Take this piece here, and this can come back and fill out the gap here between. And there you have Cadmus in his gorgeous jet mode. They're really nice good looking here. They put a lot of paint and detail that wasn't there in the robot mode, so it was just solely for this. The gold here, the blue here, the intake black here, more blue paint back here. Paint on the engines here and on the back. Got the cockpit there. Nice intakes here. The wings look really nice. I forgot to show this step in the transformation, but basically you're just going to lift these up out of here and have them sit on top for those wings. Back looks really nice. I like the boosters here and then the detail up here. Very clean looking jet mode. It does have wheels, it does roll on those reels really nicely. It's a nice hefty figure with die casts, it rolls nicely. The wings look great in this mode as well. Now, there are a lot of unused peg ports, like here, here, I mean, there's just a lot of them. And that is because this is going to combine with the Victory Leo. So you can see there's all sorts of ports that this is gonna attach to that Victory Leo. I just didn't mention it in the robot mode, but it's definitely there. There's lots of little ports and you can see why they're only the reason for them to be there is to allow you to combine this with that Victory Leo. So I'm excited for that. That should be coming out soon. Um, but either way, really nice jet mode. You can take the sword here if you want to stow it. It's a little awkward, but it'll sit right there. So you can fly along with the sword sticking out. Uh, but still, very, very cool looking Ultima. And for a quick size comparison, there it is next to a Masterpiece scaled jet. This is the MP52 Skywarp. And actually about the same size, honestly. About the same height, same width, and just about the same length. So this is basically the size of an MP Seeker. So there you go. So final thoughts on the Planet X Cadmos. Let's start with the positives. I think the overall deco, paint, sculpt detail Really, really well done. It's a very premium looking and just premium materials overall. Plenty of die cast. Um, really solid. I do like the sword. Um, there's not a lot of accessories. You get the alternate face and you get the sword here and that's kind of it. I mean, you can use this as a shield on the side so that's a nice option. The articulation is really top notch. It can do a lot. You can get into poses like this. I'm not all that creative, so this is the best I could do, but you can do a lot with this. But negatives wise, the articulation in some spots is actually kind of irritating. So one of those spots is these feet. Now in a pose like this, it doesn't matter, but this tilt is a little too loose. So it ends up tilting away on you when you're not like you don't want it to. And then the knee joint here, because it's a double joint, 
I like that it's elbow joint, but the top joint is loose. So sometimes it'll fold on you when you don't want it to. Other than that though, this is a really cool figure. If you're a fan of the Star Saber or just IDW in general, I think it's a really cool representation of that character. Now, I can't wait to see how this is going to look with the Nemios, the version of Victory Leo. And it's IDW Victory Leo, which doesn't exist. I don't think there was a Victory Leo in IDW. So that'll be a cool little thing to see. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.